The following is a CSPN Media podcast presentation. Hey, let me tell you about who deserves a shot at the United States Heavyweight. Let's hear it. I'm the champion. I ought to know. You know, I've, I've been sizing up guys since I came to WCW. And I think the one guy that stands out the most, the guy that I think has earned a title shot, El Dandy, I think you're a heck of a wrestler. You're a great technician in the ring. And you're a jam-up guy. Whoa. I don't see any Whoa. reason. Wait a minute. El Dandy has been wrestling in, in, in the cruiserweight division here. Please. He's a great wrestler. He's a great wrestler, but thank goodness sakes, it's 50 pounds. Who are you to, to, to doubt El Dandy? Because this guy's a serious professional. Well, let's talk about some serious How about, how about hypnosis? Let's get thrown Psychosis? Out. Psychosis? Whatever, whatever. He's a great wrestler. You know, he Hello, and welcome to episode 250 of the WrestleCast. I'm your host, Don DeLorente, and I'm joined by my SmackDown Matters correspondent, Miss Didi Jonet. Hey. What's up, friend? Not much, friend. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to ask you a question I haven't asked you in a while. Ooh, okay. What are you drinking? Oh. Oh. I, um, well, as this is a non-sponsored post, I am drinking an unknown brand from, of water, not alcohol, <laughs> from from the local, um, pharmacy. Yeah, it's, it's purified water with yeah. electrolytes added for taste. You're, you're, you're representing hard because we have the raw cast broadcast journalist on tonight, Mr. Samuel <laughs> Kalunga. Is that is that what it is? In honor of him? Um, no. Oh, she, she does nothing about it. <laughs> I mean, you all got to say it like that. But... Have you all tried that Life Water? The one where it has the electrolytes in it? It tastes disgusting. Does it taste disgusting? To me, it does. I don't, I don't know if it's the electrolytes or something about it. It just does not taste good. Mm. Well, this water I have tastes amazing, and it was on sale. Cause you know I went to that pharmacy that gives you the seven foot long receipts, and there was a couple coupons in there. Oh, that one! I know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, that one. Mm-hmm. I legit had a receipt that was longer than I was tall, and I was like, "This is disrespectful." Yeah, they do waste a lot of paper at that particular so much pharmacy. Paper. So much paper. <laughs> Thank y'all for joining me this week for this milestone episode of the WrestleCast, episode 250. So we'd like to thank everybody who's been rocking with us from the beginning. Everybody who has just recently found us this week or last week, however you may have found us, thank you. We appreciate y'all for making up the community and sticking with us throughout these 250 episodes of this version of the WrestleCast. Big shout out to the guys who set the foundation, Classic. Tim Dog, all those original WrestleCast guys, definitely appreciate appreciate y'all as well. So just wanted to get that out of the way for this milestone episode. So we're going to review NXT TakeOver that took place this past Saturday night from Toronto to kick off the SummerSlam weekend. Thanks to everybody who joined us for the hashtag cast TakeOver on Saturday night. The live tweet was a bunch of fun as always. So we start off with our favorite tag team in NXT, the Street Profits, going against the Undisputed Era for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Kyle O'Reilly counters the spear by Dawkins with a knee strike and locks on the guillotine. Montez Ford flies in with the blockbuster for a two count as Bobby Fish makes the save. They fight to their feet and they start trading strikes. O'Reilly hits a running knee strike on Dawkins. Ford fires back. We get a super kick by Ford, and the tope follows, and he wipes out the challengers. Back in the ring, Dawkins spears O'Reilly, and then Bobby Fish. We get the frog splash by Montez Ford, and the champions retain the NXT Tag Team Championships. Yay. Big ol' yay, because I thought that this was going to be the night that prophecy was fulfilled. But right off the bat, we found out that no. The Street Profits were at least going to hold up their end, and they get the win. Smart booking, because they've been on Raw. They've been a featured part of Raw. So at least if people tuned in to see them wrestle for the first time from Raw, they got to see them win. So I like that. Good move. Montez Ford is the man. And uh, the Undisputed Era have a little bit of a gripe that we'll find out about 
on this version of NXT that we'll review a little bit later in the show. Miss Didi Janae, did you catch this match, this opening match? I did not. My um my uh the account issues. wasn't working. Yes, at the yes. Time, so I wasn't able to participate. Yes, yes. The the new network did not have a good weekend. Uh, as a lot of people found out that oh, it updated, and then they found out that and have they been cutting, that, they've been cutting people off. Um, no, mm. not well. They have been talking about share limits, yeah, but I guess it's a certain number, and you just got to get in before, uh, right? Get in before the limit is hit. But no, the stream was just bad. Oh, okay, bad. because I remember like like maybe a couple years ago they asked Triple H about like you know sharing streams or whatever and he was basically like hey whatever whatever's clever yeah it hadn't hurt so, you, so yeah they were they were cool with it but i guess now they're cracking down yeah well they're probably going to start trying to tear it off where you know there's a 9.99 tier there's a 12.99 tier and there's a oh, like family, family plan or something yeah i guess that's what they're trying to do so like the lower tiers can only watch like thunder and stuff like that yeah <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. All right. Next, uh, our next match: Io Shirai versus Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae goes up top. She gets cut off, and Io Shirai follows her up and hits the Spanish Fly for a great near fall. Io Shirai can't believe Candice kicked out, and then she follows with strikes. But Candice LeRae cradles a four-two count. Io counters into a backbreaker and heads up top, and the moon salt connects, but it's only for a two count. Io unloads with slaps on Candice, and the Koji clutch variation follows. Candice LeRae fights, but then she eventually passes out, and Io Shirai is your winner. Yay. Uh, this was dope. Super dope. Probably, in most people's eyes, the match of the night. Io Shirai as a heel is fantastic. Candice LeRae got to be Candice Wrestling, not Johnny gargano's wife in this particular iteration and she was fantastic this was really good they did a lot of good stuff and uh it warrants another rematch so i'd like to see another match between these two and hopefully they can get the same spotlight again it may be an nxt tv match main event or something like that but good stuff by both of these ladies i think everybody came out of this match this weekend going yep that's probably one of the best two or three matches of the whole NXT weekend. So shout out to Candice LeRae and Io Shirai for putting on a show. Then they use my angle, but just the night too soon and for the wrong guy. Matt Riddle arrives. He jumps the barricade. He calls out Killian Dane for a fight. Killian Dane arrives. He jumps the barricade from the other side. They brawl on the floor. They're trading strikes. Killian Dane lands a bicycle kick as the officials try to break them up. Matt Riddle charges Killian Dane and they brawl on the stage. Killian Dane rakes the eyes and Riddle catches him with a pair of knee strikes. Riddle follows with the ground and pound as more officials arrive to put a stop to it. Riddle starts to fight off the officials. He hits knee strikes and then he bro to sleep un- until Killian Dane cuts him off and starts pummeling him. Riddle tries to choke out Killian Dane. Killian Dane fights him off. And then Killian Dane takes them off of the stage and they fly through some tables down at the bottom. And uh, that was the major angle that they shot, which I thought they could have used brilliantly for Goldberg. Had Did the same thing, have Matt Riddle jump the rail, talking shit to Goldberg, maybe not have him get physical, but just have him talk and all that stuff. And it could have been the talk of the weekend, but they did it with Killian Dane in this instance, so. How much is a royalty? What fifteen percent, Miss Didi Janae? Is that should that's, that's how much? would be good, but they changed it. See, that's what they do. They take your idea and then they alter it just enough so that they don't have to pay you for using your idea. That's the scam. But you should have seen the reaction I had at home when that Io Shirai match ends, and then all of a sudden, around this corner with a microphone, here comes Matt Riddle. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yep, they got him on a show the exact way I said, just a little bit different. Uh, Evolves champion Austin Theory. He's in the crowd, so everybody's speculating about his future plans. Now it's time for the NXT North American Championship match. The Velveteen Dream defends his title in a triple threat against Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong. 
Dream gets the Raptors uh, basketball team, their dancers, as a part of his Mountie theme entrance. So that was good. Dream flies coast to coast with an elbow drop on the Pete Dunn. We get knee strikes by Roderick Strong, who follows with the running elbow strikes. And then he tiger drivers Pete Dunn onto the Velveteen Dream. Roderick Strong locks on the double stronghold. They escape. Dream fights back. And the double Dream Valley driver is counted. Pete Dunn snaps both of their fingers and hits the bitter end on the Velveteen Dream, but he stops the count. Pete Dunn hits the curb stop on the Dream. Roderick Strong fires back. He counters the bitter end and gets the stronghold once again. Dream tosses Roderick Strong and hits the Dream Valley driver on Pete Dunn. Roderick Strong dumps the Velveteen Dream and hits the end of the heartache, but Velveteen Dream makes the save and he eventually pins Pete Dunn. And the Velveteen Dream retains the NXT North American Championship. Oh, nice. Yeah. Triple H making up for all those years he held down Booker T and wouldn't let him have the belt. <clears throat> Keeping the titles on the black guys in uh, NXT right now. Because I sure thought uh, Velveteen Dream and the Street Profits were going to lose their titles. But no, this builds up a Velveteen Dream versus Pete Dunn one-on-one match that was going to be fire it's definitely going to be the semi-main event of a takeover maybe at SummerSlam I mean excuse me Survivor Series that might be the next big event that Velveteen Dream gets to showcase but in a one-on-one match against Pete Dunne I'm here for it Miss Dijonet this might be the part of the show that you have a lot to say is Shayna Baszler defended her NXT Women's Championship against Mia Yim. Shayna Baszler avoids kicks and hits a couple of knee strikes as she covers for a two count. Mia Yim covers and stuns Baszler off the ropes and the tarantula follows. Mia heads up top and Baszler cuts her off. They battle for position and Yim follows with the super code red for a two count. Shayna Baszler locks on the clutch but Yim attacks the injured arm and she escapes. She stomps on the arm of Baszler and the PK in armbar follows. Mia cranks back, but Shayna Baszler counters into the clutch again. Mia attacks the arm. She escapes, but Baszler locks on the figure four head choke and Mia Yim has to tap out. So Shayna Baszler is still your NXT Women's Champion. Mia Yim was a great game plan. She went after the arm to combat getting put in the Karafuda clutch. Uh, Shayna Baszler could not get the Karafuda clutch because of the bad arm, but she did a little bit of improvising, used a figure four head choke, and did Mia in. These two had to have a totally different match than Io Shirai and Candice LeRae because they did Candice LeRae and Io did so much flying and so much, you know, out of the ring and stuff that they had more of a mat based match. And I don't know if that translated well to the crowd or the people at home. But I thought it was fine. I like Zack Sabre Jr. matches, so I thought this was really cool. Mm. Uh, your thoughts on Shayna Baszler just maintaining her dominance in uh, NXT? Um, there's a rumor out there that mm. Dakota Kai is getting ready to come back. Oh, I remember little Dakota. And everybody is starting to say, because we're starting to come full circle, where remember it was Mia Yim who stood up for Dakota Kai when Shayna Baszler first started trying to punk the whole locker room. Right, yeah. That now that she's ready to come back, that it might be Dakota Kai since they've kind of spun off Candice LeRae with EO. I mean, it's it's at that point where it's like, if if not them, then who? You know, like, somebody got to do it unless they're going to do another Oscar where she'll move up undefeated, bitch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, who knows? Yeah, we'll see, but... Yeah. she's good at this wrestling heel thing you can't deny her that whether you like her or don't like her yeah I don't like her but I enjoy not liking her yes does that make sense mm-hmm. yeah it's it's that it's a different type of dislike than you have for Ronda Rousey I totally get it yeah like I just want her to go away <laughs> or had they done what I wanted which was put them versus each other cause that would have been funny for me <laughs> it would have amused me. It's the main. Um, oh, excuse me. Wait, before you go, on, shout out yes, to what's his name? 
Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. O A W report. Yeah. First of all, how are you just gonna decide to put up your Twitter handle? Like that wasn't even a discussion we had had. But I was like, who told you to do that? But okay. Yeah, y'all had mm-hmm. y'all's little personal bet. I don't even know what that stemmed from. No, 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 no. Y'all didn't have a personal or, or bet. He had a personal he bet. He had a personal <laughs> bet. <laughs> It's like, like apologize to D.D. It's like, okay, I don't know what he's apologizing for, but that sounds interesting. It was it was a random choice he made. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what precipitated that for him, but shout out to him and in, in his win. So he's still on Twitter happily. He just wanted to, I guess, make the match more interesting than, you know, he maybe had a feeling it might not be that Ooh. good. So he wanted had to make it a little bit one. more interesting. Had meal one. I would have cackled. Because, again, it didn't have nothing to do with me. That was a choice he made. So, <laughs> uh, that would have been too funny. Yeah, that was definitely a match that I had a little bit more uh, interest in just to see the outcome. I was like, well, what's going to happen with this apology and this deletion of a Twitter account? This is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Main event time. Adam Cole, baby, defending his NXT championship against Johnny Gargano. Two out of three falls match. So fall one is a straight up wrestling match. Adam Cole cuts off the suicide dive by Gargano. But Gargano sends him into the barricade and the slingshot DDT on the floor follows for two count. The super kick follows, but Adam Cole follows with super kicks back in the ring. And the last shot connects for two count. Adam Cole then follows with strikes. He rolls to the outside and grabs a chair. He slides it in and the ref takes it away. Cole super kicks Gargano for a two count. Cole grabs the chair and sets it up and he takes a seat. Cole then tosses the chair out and argues with the ref. Gargano hits the super kick and Gargano grabs the chair and he nails Adam Cole in front of the ref for DQ. So Adam Cole, baby, has won fall one by disqualification. And we head straight into Fall 2, which is a street fight. Adam Cole cuts Johnny off with the Shining Wizard, and the Ushiguroshi gets two count. Cole wedges a chair in the corner, but Gargano fights him off. Cole hits a super kick. Gargano battles back, and he lawn darts Adam Cole into the chair, and Gar- the Gargano escape evens things up. That was nasty. I don't know how you, like, protect yourself. When you're getting thrown off a man's shoulders straight into a steel chair wedged into the corner. Yeah. So now we're all even at two. And then the final fall, Steven Regal got to pick it. And he had this demonic structure made up, this cage with uh, barbed wire across the top and all types of weapons embedded in the cage. So the weapons fill cage with the barbed wire top lowers. There's no escaping of the cage for a win. Only pin or submission will get you the victory. Adam Cole misses the last shot. Gargano locks on the kendo-assisted STF. Okay, so if you go back in the history, that's how he beat um, Ciampa, was with the STF with the kendo stick. Cole bites his way out. Adam Cole follows with strikes. We get a kendo stick shot by Gargano, and he sets up a ladder. He lays Cole on the table and he climbs the ladder. Adam Cole rolls off the table so Gargano drops down and follows with more kendo stick shots. They work up top and Gargano hits a super Panama sunrise but only for a two count. Both men are down. Gargano brings out bolt cutters and snips away some bob wire from the top of the cage. Adam Cole is terrified so he tries to escape and they work on top of a table on top of the cage in the corner. They trade strikes. Gargano looks to attack with the barbed wire and they fly off the cage through the tables in the ring and Adam Cole drapes one arm over Johnny Gargano to get the pin and retain the NXT championship. Whew, that cage match was pretty vicious. This whole match was long. A lot of super kicks. Some pretty nice Panama sunrises by both men. Really good match. It feels like the send off for Johnny Gargano. The very, you know, last match he's going to have in NXT. And if it was, it's definitely a great note to leave on. Adam Cole, the only one successful of the Undisputed Era, he maintained, retained the championship. 
This was nasty. Um, Adam Cole is really good at these long matches. So Johnny Gargano told another great story, but just like a match against Ciampa, trying to take it too far when he clearly could have just won the match. And uh, it cost him because he had to go for the barbed wire. Oh, but what was real funny was uh, he grabs a bag. So, of course, people are conditioned that if it's a cage match and somebody grabs a bag, what's going to be in the bag? Thumbtacks, right? Yeah. <laughs> he grabbed a bag and it was a whole bunch of like brass nucks and a whole bunch of Ooh. just assorted stuff. And it was those wire cutters in there. And people were like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> It's like we want the we want the we want the thumbtacks. Uh so uh just a really good takeover as always. I thought this was really strong. Gotta give it up to the Street Profits of Velveteen Dream retaining their titles. Eo Shirai and uh, Candice LeRae best match on the card. The main event was the second best match in my estimation. It's a little long, but you know, this is a blow off match of a of the hottest feud they've had in the company uh this year, so they had to kind of make it go feel big and that's what they did. So good stuff from NXT as always. So now we're gonna transition over to SummerSlam. Thank you to everybody who came out for the hashtag Summer Slams and also the hashtag say no to pre shows. So we start off with the Cruiserweight Championship match between Drew Gulak and Oni Lorcan. Drew Gulak takes control and starts pummeling Oni Lorcan, and the Gulak is countered into a cradle for a two count. Lorcan lights up Gulak with slaps and a running uppercut. Gulak grabs the ring skirt and then punches Oni Lorcan in the throat, and the Argentine cutter by Drew Gulak gets the win, and Drew Gulak retains the Cruiserweight Championship. Good match. Two really hard-hitting guys in a match that everybody should go back and watch. Uh, they've had a, another good match on 205 Live this week, too, that nobody saw because they got the hell out of there after SmackDown this week. It's been a long weekend in Toronto, so they weren't really trying to see no 205 Live. But they had a really good match, so check out the series of matches between Gulak and Only Lorcan. They'd be sneaking in these matches on us, DD, because they didn't. We didn't have none of these extracurricular matches they had on this pre-show in our review last week. Buddy Murphy pops up on the card to face Apollo Cruz. Hmm. Buddy hits the cheeky Nando's kick and the Liger bomb for a two count. They trade strikes, and Buddy hits a fury of kicks and a flying knee strike. Apollo counters Murphy's law into a cradle for his own two count. They fight out to the floor, and Apollo is tossed into the steps. And Buddy Murphy follows with a tope con hilo. Back in, that's when Eric Rowan arrives to attack Buddy Murphy for the DQ. Rowan power bombs but Buddy Murphy into the post and stands tall while Daniel Bryan watches from the stage. Uh, the whole time that Buddy Murphy is getting beat up, you can hear these dudes going, Stit, uh, snitches get stitches. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's what you get for telling, buddy. So that was pretty good. Uh, even though Eric Rowan did not sound comfortable screaming, uh, keep my name out of your mouth. Just seemed <laughs> a little awkward to me. But so I thought that maybe this was going to be Roman doing something with Rowan and Daniel Bryan. But no, they saved it. And they had Eric Rowan out here getting some revenge on Buddy Murphy. So that was cool for Buddy Murphy to get some shine. So, so when are we going to get to the part where Rowan tells Brian, I did it for you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> that might be next week on SmackDown, Once we, the way that SmackDown ended. He's like, I did it for the bearded people. <laughs> Elias is in the ring. He is doing his deal just running down Toronto talking about how he'd like to be chilling with his friend Kawhi Leonard how the Toronto Maple Leafs are suck and then you think you know me the music hits and Edge comes out of course he spears Elias gets him out of the paint Miss Didi wow, they actually let him do something? yeah they said they had to like freaking lobby hard for him to do it. 
Miss Didi Janet was somewhere in parts unknown, not watching this, missing all her life, her I past couldn't. and present. I wasn't able. Uh, her past and present meeting at the same time in the same room. Let me, let me tell you about your little network, okay? It's loaded <laughs> onto my TV. So when it works, I can just press the app and it moves and I go there. Just like the Netflix, just like the Amazon. Well, WWE changed whatever they changed. Now when I click on the WWE app, I get a blank screen. It goes black and then it turns my TV off. Like, I don't even get a, you got to sign in. I can't even get to that part. So I got some nothings. Yeah, it seems like it's only working on phones and tablets and your laptops right now. That's so annoying. It worked on a computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like I th- on my TV. <laughs> right. They removed they removed it from the older bottle apples, Apple TVs. Um like Apple, I think I, I think I had generation 3. Uh, they removed it from that completely. Mm. I have mine. I guess this is an app I found in the Samsung store. No, the LG store. I have an LG TV. Or I have a TV of unknown origin because this is not that's what I have. Yeah, so get it together, WWE Network. Enough of y'all didn't watch the uh, Saturday Night SmackDown for them to get an accurate test of it. So this was mm-hmm. the first weekend where a lot of people were really on it, and it failed with flying colors. But That's but yes, I, I, I sent you the clip, so hopefully you saw it on Twitter. Your 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 two faves in the same ring at the same time. I don't know that I want to see Elias getting a spear, but I do like seeing Edge. Yes. He has the real long hair again. He doesn't have the short hair. I saw. TV. I ended up, me and my friend, we ended up going through like a whole bunch. We ended up talking about just wrestling for like a couple hours. It was, it was shit like talking about Chris Jericho, what he looked like now, Edge, what he looks like now. Did you know he's married to Beth Phoenix? Like she ain't really watched in a couple of months, years. So it was interesting, and then I realized he is super blonde when he used to be brunette. And it's like, did you add some tracks to your hair to get you that length that you need? But summer slam, so that was it was fun. Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss they faced off against the Iconics as they defended their women's tag team championships. Nikki hits the jawbreaker, and they work into a double down. We get wholesale changes as. Bliss and Billy Kay tag in. Bliss hits the double knee moonsault and Kay cuts her off. Peyton Royce tags back in. Uh, Alexa Bliss fights them off. Nikki tags in and takes out Billy Kay. Peyton Royce maintains control and covers for a two count. She throws a fit. Alexa Bliss then hits the big right hand, followed by the twisted Bliss, aka the Sparkle Splash. And Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss retain the NXT, or excuse me, the women's tag team titles. They seem like the NXT tag team titles as much as they don't get defended right now. Oh. All right. Goodbye, Ricky and Robert. <laughs> uh, man, it sucks for the iconic stage. It's just, just when they were starting to get good at wrestling. Now it's time for uh <laughs> now it's time for Peyton to hit that uh that barbershop window. Peyton? Well to hit it on Billy. Hit oh, the oh, kick oh, 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 okay, okay. Or oh, time, time for Billy to go through the, the barbershop. Okay, there you go. Now I'm not confused. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like I said a couple of weeks ago, I came into this all about some Peyton, but like at the end of this, uh, no, Billy Kay grew on me a little bit. She can. I don't know if she's ready for the barbershop window yet. <laughs> but Peyton Royce definitely could be a breakout star if she went single. Speaking of breakout stars. Becky Lynch faced off against Natalia for the Raw Women's Championship. Natalia attacks the knee and she locks on the disarmor. Becky counters and makes the ropes. Natalia keeps the hold on, but Becky counters out until Natalia locks on the sharpshooter. Uh, Natalia traps Becky in the center of the ring, but Becky desperately crosses the ropes and Natalia drags her back to the center of the ring again. Becky counters into the disarmor. She cranks back until Natalia has to tap. And Becky Lynch retains the Raw Women's Championship. Yay. It was an okay match. Uh, the cool thing was uh, Natalia 
did this v- version of the sharpshooter on Becky on the second ropes. So that was pretty cool. It looked pretty hot. But, uh, you know, expected outcome. Becky Lynch getting the win. Trish cuts a promo in the back on her match later tonight. Oh, my Charlotte. God. Did you did you see her outfit? Jesus. Trish Stratus? Yes. Yeah. Did you like Just, it? Yeah. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Just, I'm like, wow. Yeah. I, like I completely forgot. I completely forgot those were there. Oh, yeah. They might have some enhancements since the last time you've seen them. Really? Maybe. Because they were, they were pretty enhanced back in the day. Yeah, but you know they have to have me. No, I think I think it's that gear. I think it just makes the way. <laughs> but it's something like they have to be switched out every, every like ten years. Yeah, yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. she's. Oh really? Oh, yeah. oh I, I don't know. She's definitely been due for an upgrade or in the middle Look of. At you. <laughs> the Dolph Ziggler cuts a promo about his greatness. He says, "Legends come and go, but he always steals the show." And then he runs down Goldberg. So it's time for Goldberg versus Dolph Ziggler. Dolph hits the super kick and he covers Goldberg for a two count. Hits another super kick and he gets another two count. Then Goldberg hits him with a spear, the jackhammer, and Dolph Ziggler is done. While Dolph is laid out in the ring, Goldberg is going back out. Dolph starts to talk shit post-match. So Goldberg returns and spears him again. So Goldberg starts to walk out again. Dolph gets back on the mic. He's talking even more shit. He calls Goldberg a laughing stock. He claims to be the very best. And then Goldberg returns and he takes his soul with a third spear. I was completely expecting for Dolph to pop out like a cattle prod or something. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. Like, I wanted this to happen. Um, Didi Janet, you'll be fantastic and ecstatic to hear that. There was full pyro in this show. What? Yeah, the begin like from the very break, like once the main show started, it was like, "Welcome to SummerSlam." What a blessing! Yeah, we had that, that is what we deserve. <laughs> come on, Didi, come on, let's hear it. Won't he do it? <laughs> Won't he? Will okay? Like that is exactly what we deserve. Full Goldberg WCW entrance with the super spark shower. It was great. The New Day, they meet up backstage, they hype up Kofi, they claim Drake is here, and he is. But it's Drake (laughs) Maverick. He was tricked. He thought our truth was going to be back there. Kofi says that he's been waiting for a decade for this matchup tonight against Randy Orton. AJ Styles versus Ricochet, United States Championship match. AJ Styles rolls into the calf crusher. Ricochet counters out and locks on the Anaconda Vice. AJ Styles escapes, but Ricochet hits the Northern Lights and transitions into a twister for a two count. Ricochet takes out the Good Brothers. He heads up top, but Styles crotches him. AJ Styles follows him up. Ricochet knocks Styles to the mat, and he takes out Carl Anderson. The Phoenix Splash is countered into the Styles Clash, and AJ Styles retains the United States Championship. The Good Brothers lay out Ricochet with the Magic Killer after the match. Uh, Ricochet did this insane... Uh, Mario Brothers thing where okay so Carl Anderson was in front Luke Gallows was right behind him and then AJ Styles was behind Luke Gallows so Ricochet's on the mat so he runs off the mat he steps on Carl Anderson's shoulders then he stepped on Gallows' shoulders and jumped off to her Karana AJ Styles on the floor that shit was hot well, that's amazing. As long as he didn't put his hands in his pockets like Orange Cassidy, so it's okay. <laughs> it was like Mario Brothers. It was like whoop whoop whoop. <laughs> yes. So what, what was what was Cornet going on about his pockets or something? What, he calls them pockets because he keeps. No, no, I understand that, but I, I didn't. I saw the. I think I saw that match, but I didn't see what he was talking about. I don't know, man. It's Tim Cornet's little nickname for him. Oh no, he calls him my dog pockets. Yeah, it's just it's just his nickname. And, and, you know, and the funny part is, like, I like Orange Cassidy. That's the part. That's the like go. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, you can't always be in line with Cornet. Some things you guys have to differ on. I mean, I know you're both old school. You're both curmudgeon but, <laughs> you know. And then we call, what does he call uh, Omega? He's like Kenny Olivier. Yeah, Kenny Olivier, the cosplay <laughs> wrestlers. 
Yeah, he went off. If you listen to the one, the most recent one for today. Oh, the one from you last week. He went off on uh, uh, forty-five. Oh yeah, well he goes off. Oh on, my god, he goes off on him again today. So yeah. oh, those, I, haven't, I haven't finished it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta listen to the whole thing. The end. It's it's awesome. Uh, something that we never thought we needed, but we got it, and it was a glorious. The Street Profits and Ric Flair backstage. Montez Ford, Angela Dawkins, they're having the time of their life. Ric Flair doing Ric Flair things at Ric Flair's age, wooing <laughs> and cutting up. Bailey and Ember Moon for the SmackDown Women's Championship is our next match. So they- but this is about the point where I actually fell asleep. Really? Because old. <laughs> Wash. Uh, shout out to Jade to the match with her Ember Moon hair. Have you seen it? Mm-hmm. You, she's got the red in now. Oh, she's red now. Yeah, as of she is doing as of lot. her latest that. Instagram story that I saw, it was red. Yeah, she better be red up in that country where she's at. I don't know. <laughs> if she wants y'all knowing. She's also in parts unknown. She stays in parts unknown. Listen, goals, okay. Bailey fights off the German suplex. Ember Moon counters Bailey, counters the Bailey to Belly and hits a powerbomb for a two count. Ember Moon heads up top. Bailey cuts her off. She runs up to the second rope and she hits an avalanche version of the Bailey to Belly off of the second rope to retain the women's championship. Hey. I don't know. This match could have been a little bit better. The crowd didn't make it that great. They worked hard though. They had a good match. I thought Ember put in a lot of work. And Bailey, I don't know. Bailey just doesn't. She just doesn't connect she not as connect, the champion. With people? Yeah, yeah. Not as the champion. Now, as the person who's going for the championship all day, but not as the champion. She needs to chase. That's what she needs to do. Yep, yep. Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens. If Kevin lo- loses, he must quit the WWE. The frog splash by Owens connects for a two count as Elias pulls out the referee. Kevin hits the apron cannonball, taking out Elias and the ref. Kevin grabs a chair, but Elias cuts him off and then gets taken out with chair shots by Kevin. The ref is back. He sees Kevin with the chair, so Kevin drops it, and then he low blows Shane. Then he hits the stunner, and Kevin Owens gets the win. Crowd was insane for Kevin Owens in this match. Oh, yeah, as a fellow, fellow countryman. Yeah. Expected outcome. Uh, you know, he roughed up Shane. Shane roughed him up a little bit. Elias got in there to add a little bells and whistles. And uh, they just continued the story with Kevin getting but, the win. But how were the punches, though? The punches were like they always were. Okay. So, no improvement. <laughs> Great. It's fantastic. Commentary team comments on Roman's recent near death experiences. Now it's time for Charlotte versus Trish Stratus. Trish locks on the figure four. Charlotte fights and Trish transitions into the figure eight. Charlotte fights and finally makes the ropes. Charlotte takes out the knee but misses the spear and the Stratus faction connects for a two count. They both fire up and trade strikes, chops, and they start to light each other up. Trish cradles Charlotte's four two and the chick kick follows for another two count. Charlotte catches Trish with the big boot. Locks on the figure four, transitions into the figure eight, and Trish Stratus taps out, and Charlotte Flair is your winner. You remember, DD, how I said last week I just wanted Trish to give Charlotte a good match and to mm-hmm. give her a good test? Mm-hmm. It took a little while, but about halfway through the match, I thought Trish started getting it going. And yeah, Charlotte knew she was there and she knew that she had to fucking dig a little bit deeper than she normally does to win that match. So I was satisfied. Good. Now, what a lot of people weren't satisfied with is the ending of this next match as Kofi Kingston took on Randy Orton as he defended his WWE championship (laughs) against Randy. Randy Orton hits the draping DDT. He sets for the end, which is the RKO, but Kofi counters the RKO into a backslide for a two count. Kofi then heads up top, but he flies into the RKO and Randy Orton laughs. So Kofi, being the smart man that he is, rolls to the floor to avoid the pinfall. 
Orton goes outside. He looks to attack Kofi in front of Kofi's wife and kids. And that's when the bell rings because of a double count out. Yeah. So the crowd is starting to chant bullshit. And all of a sudden, Kofi starts to beat down Randy Orton. He hey. goes under the ring, gets a kendo stick. And he just starts wailing on Randy Orton with this kendo stick. Then Kofi hits the trouble in paradise. And he stands tall as he celebrates at ringside with his wife and kids. See, at first I didn't know why the bell rang. I mean, I thought maybe, like, Kofi did something to him. Kicking too much he, ass? Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I thought at first. But then it was just a count out of nowhere. Yeah, because people aren't used to, you know, the rules mattering when people go outside the ring. So when the referee actually makes it up to the 10 count, people look around like, why is the bell ringing? <laughs> It's like, because he's counting. So, no end to that match. Uh, it was very for the culture, though, watching Kofi Kingston beat the shit out of him with that kendo stick, though. It's like, and this, this is for that Twitter post. In that Twitter post. <laughs> That's the only thing that was missing was Kofi talking that shit to him to why he was beating him like that. Hmm. But, yeah, we're here for it. Uh, like I said, DD, the build was great. I didn't know what the match was going to bring. It was so slow because, you know, that's how Randy Orton likes to do things. Doesn't mm-hmm. like for the match to go too fast. So he's holding Kofi down the whole time. So I think that's another thing that kind of, when they finally got to the end, people were like, oh, this is some bullshit. We didn't see nothing. It's very <laughs> rare to see like a title match in, the, uh, in, in bullshit uh, on, a, on SummerSlam on like one of the big four. Right, right. Well, it could be leading up to maybe a Hell in a Cell or something because um, they have Clash of Champions coming up in September and then October is Hell in a Cell. So they may be leading up to a a blow-off match between these two. Hmm. Now for the highlight of the whole night, The Fiend debuts against Finn Balor. So, Miss Didi Jane, you would have loved this because uh, Finn Balor came out in the cocaine white. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he must have knew that he was about to get uh, uh, baptized or whatever because he was looking like, you know, he was about to get sent to the Lord. The Fiend comes out. The lantern is Bray Wyatt's old head. I saw that. That was terrifying. So he's carrying that as his new lantern. He has the mask. He has on some look like those old Danny Davis. Remember the wrestler Danny Davis, the referee, uh, Sam. The referee or a nightmare? No, Danny no, no, Davis. not nightmare Danny Davis. The referee, the, the yeah. guy who eventually went through who who was riffing. Right. Who was riffing? Oh yeah, he was a wrestler first. Yeah, remember his tights? He had the striped black and white wrestling tights. Hmm. Like a referee, I'm, like I'm referee having... shirt, wrestling tights. Well, anyway, Bray now, Wyatt. was he the was he the crooked referee? I yes. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I remember. Yes. He Bray Wyatt has like those same kind of tights, but they're red and black, so it kind of looks like Kane. Looks like a cross. Oh, uh, Terry Funk used to have tights like that. Yeah. There you go. He has. It's like a cross between the Undertaker entrance, Bray Wyatt, the old Bray Wyatt, and Kane because of the red and black color scheme. But yeah, this entrance was freaking awesome. He has a, like a remix version of his old theme music. So yeah, man, everything about this was fucking fire. At least he didn't come out doing the muscle dance. <laughs> the muscle man dance was his shit. Uh, the Fiend, he snaps the neck of Finn Balor. He follows with the Uranagi. The sister Abigail is countered by sling blades. Who's the Nagi? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Balor fires up with kicks, the standing double stomp, and the John Woo drop kick. He heads up top, and the Fiend cuts off the double stomp with the mandible claw for the win. And Finn Balor is going to go off into the sunset for a couple of months, not to be seen or heard from again. And the Fiend apparently is going to be made very special as he is not going to be on TV every week and so they're trying to, you know, I guess turn him into the new version of The Undertaker where he, his entrance and everything is just so special and immaculate, you can't do it every week. Good start. We'll see where it goes. For the first time in a long time, if ever, people actually cared about a Bray Wyatt wrestling match. Not the promo, 
not the entrance, but the actual in-ring action. And that's a big improvement from where he was with the old character. So we'll see if he can keep it up. Main event of the evening, Brock Lesnar defending the Universal Championship against Seth Rollins. Brock slams Seth to the buckles, but then misses the shoulder charge and runs into the post. Seth knocks Brock to the floor and follows with two suicide dives, but Brock catches the third suicide dive and runs him into the post. Brock dismantles an announce table, but Seth hits the super kick and um, Brock lands on the table. So Seth goes up top and he hits the high fly flow to Brock on the announce table. Seth heads back up top and he hits another high fly flow. Then the blackout connects and Seth covers for two count. Seth sets up and the blackout is countered, but Seth hits the super kick and he follows that up with the blackout and Seth Rollins pins Brock Lesnar and he is the new Universal Champion. I had to switch to the Spanish commentary for this match because I just couldn't take it anymore. Michael Cole was actually not that bad. It was more Corey Greaves than anything else. Oh, okay. I thought this was a Michael Cole issue. No, he's never really been a problem to me. It's just he can sometimes just be a bit obnoxious, but then Corey Graves just completely overwhelms Michael Cole and I don't know. Best Brock Lesnar match in quite a while. Seth Rollins taking a ass whooping for the first like three or four minutes of the match and then kind of surviving, then kind of getting his shit in, but then Brock cuts him off. And, you know, starts beating him down again. But then Seth fights back from that and then eventually overcomes. Really good formula to the match. And uh, I think this match was about 18 minutes. So Brock put in some overtime. He probably got a little bit extra on this check. <laughs> you know, he usually doesn't do more than like 12 minutes in a match. So uh, he did the thing where he took off his gloves and everybody was like, oh, shit. You're about to fuck Seth up, but it didn't happen. Seth Rollins held him off. So it was a good match, good story, and uh, I really appreciated the uh, outcome, and especially Brock working hard because everybody always talks about Brock not doing shit. Well, he did a lot of shit in this main event. So Mr. Samuel Kalunga, break out the Sour Patch Kids, what would you like to rate? I actually didn't see the whole thing, so. Well, rate what uh, you saw. It was okay, I guess. I mean, it wasn't bad. I mean, okay. It was fine. Yeah, it was if, if, on a scale of we'll do, since it's a pay-per-view, we'll increase the scale to 1 to 10. Uh, it was probably about a 6. You know, it, it had a couple of... The crowd didn't help it, because the crowd was not your typical Canadian crowd. So, there was a bunch of dead spots. But when they did get into it, they did help the matches uh, become more interesting, so... No, I give uh, Trisha's uh, outfit a, a, a 10 sour patches as out of 10. <laughs> yeah, we, we understand that. So all in all, good weekend. Uh, like I said, out of those two big events, Io Shirai and Candice LeRae probably did the most for their stock as being the breakout stars of the uh, SummerSlam and NXT TakeOver weekend. This is the WrestleCast. This is episode 250. I'm your host, Don DeLorente. I'm here with my SmackDown Matters correspondent, Ms. Dijonet, and our RawCast broadcast journalist, Mr. Samuel Kalunga. So, Sam, at this time, we're going to turn it over to you. Tell us about this week's Monday Night Raw. All righty, here we go. Monday Night Raw, live from uh, somewhere in Canada. Toronto, Canada. Mm-hmm. All right, so the new WWE Universal Champion Seth Rollins comes down to cut a boring 20-minute promo. The crowd chants burn it down as he stands in the ring. He says he wasn't sure he could beat Brock Lesnar, but it was the fans. They, they came alive and helped him pull through. You know, the OC come down. AJ Styles says that the OC wants to be the first to congratulate him. They applaud, and AJ says, while he doesn't have to worry about Brock Lesnar anymore, he does have to worry about the man in front of him. Uh, he challenges Seth tonight to a match because he believes he is a much better champion than him. Seth accepts. AJ is giddy as a schoolgirl. The two shake hands, and AJ lets him know, so lets him know, let it be known that it will be strictly one on one. As Gallo and Gallows and Anderson loom on the apron. Now the crowd actually begins an AJ Styles chat at some point. 
Let's see, the Street Profits are in the back giving us a recap of what we just saw. Uh, Sami Zayn appears and tells them to enjoy themselves now because eventually the fans will suck his soul and lick his funky emotions. Uh, the Prophets want to know if it happens to everyone, including Samoa Joe. Of course, uh, Zayn says, of course, yes, it, of course it happens to Samoa Joe. You see how they broke him, how they broke him down and now he's crying over Roman? And he's not realizing that Joe is standing right behind him the entire time. <laughs> uh, Joe challenges Zayn to a match and he shoves the holy hell out of him. My man, Andre, uh, Angelo Dawkins out here partying up, all dehydrated. Look like he drank too you need much. some electrolytes. Yeah, yeah. yeah looks like he drank too much tequila. <laughs> hanging, trying to hang out with Ric Flair, I guess. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't know that Ric Flair used to throw those shots over the shoulder and not drink them all. Right. <laughs> all right. So we get a vignette for a return of the King of the Ring. So I pose this question to both of you: What were some of your favorite King of the Ring moments? Oh, Owen Hart winning the King of the Ring for sure. Oh, 1994. Four, mm-hmm. Yep, because he was a two-time slamming winner and a king of the ring. You know, he didn't actually win those slammies, right? And stop. Oh, okay. Would okay. you stop? Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty good. Do you like damn Gorilla Monsoon now? Would you stop? Oh. Ooh, stop. <laughs> no. Yeah, Didi, in case you didn't know, like when they were doing the announcing, when they were saying, like, and the winner of this year's Slammy is, Owen mm-hmm. Hart just stood up and yelled, I won, I won, and grabbed the Slammy. He did that twice that night. Listen, you got to make a way out of no way sometimes. <laughs> I've got the members uh, of the uh, King of the Ring tournament here. So give me a second. I'll interject myself in your review. Mm-hmm. Our raw members are going to be Baron Corbin. Cesaro, yeah. Cedric Alexander, Drew McIntyre, Ricochet, Sami Zayn, Samoa Joe, and The Miz. Our SmackDown members are going to be Ali, Andrade, Apollo Crews, Buddy Murphy, Chad Gable, Elias, Kevin Owens, and Shelton Benjamin. Okay, so it'll be a winner from Raw. Shelton That's Benjamin. Clear. You mean, hopefully it'll be one person from Raw versus one person from SmackDown. That's the final. My my pick is Andrade. That's a good pick. That's a real good pick. Miss Didi Janae, you got a pick? I do not have a pick. I don't trust none of them people. <laughs> <laughs> so I, what are my favorite? Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, no, I was gonna say uh, between Andrade, Ricochet, and Kevin Owens, one of those three. That sounds right. Mm-hmm. And so, your favorite memory? I'm sorry. Oh, one of my favorite memories was Mankind at the 96 uh, King of the... No, no, not that one. Not the, the one where he uh, where he uh, wrestled The Undertaker for the first time on mm-hmm. pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that was like the first time a lot of people got to see Mank... Or actually, uh, Mick Foley. Because it was just like... holy. Because like, at first, like when they brought him in as Mankind, I was like, what the hell is this? Why can't he just be Cactus Jack? But then I saw him in that match, and it turned it turned me. I was I became a fan of Mankind that night. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, let's see, Stone Cold won it in '96, right? Yes. So '97 when Triple H won Triple it. Triple H. Yeah, I really like that one too. Did you like when Ken Shamrock won in '98? No, not as much. Not as much. <laughs> or uh, Billy Gunn in '99. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking, of Billy Gunn. King- King, king ass. Yeah, yeah. The King um, Booker run was really cool. Christmas. Uh, I, I was really not to be mentioned. He won it. Uh, oh yeah, I completely forgot about that. No, um, uh, Kurt Angle in two thousand. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. And that was a good one. Brock Lesnar in O two. I used to have a friend who could actually be able to pick these. Like when he told us that Brock Lesnar was going to win that year, we were like, oh, you know, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, hopefully it's much better than the last iteration they had where Wade Barrett won it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember they had it, it was like on SmackDown or something, or it was, I don't even, oh, it was on the network, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was know. on the network. It's when they were actually trying to do cool shit on the network. Before they completely gave up. <laughs> right. But yeah, all right, so, do you, do you have a favorite King of the Ring memory? One Billy Gunn won. Because I liked Mr. Ass. Yes. <laughs> yeah, then he was buried the next pay-per-view. Well, he was buried by uh, The Rock. 
in the Wait, listen. It, things happen, but when they, when he shoved his he shoved his face into that some fat woman's behind. <laughs> Goals. Okay. It was a weird it was really weird to watch. But yeah, that was pretty much the burial of Billy Gunn. That was pretty much the end of his single run. All right. Samoa Joe versus Sami Zayn. The match begins and ends with Joe beating the crap out of Sami and applying a submission. After the match, Joe grabs a mic and says, well, he forgives Roman Reigns for accusing him of running him over. Uh, that forgiveness is not extended to the fans, and he will never forgive any of them. All right, The Miz versus... This is all from Hulu, so Don, if, if there's anything important that I miss, oh. by important, I don't mean Elias. Hey... <laughs> It's just oh, a, a Dolph. Uh, Dolph comes down. He's not dressed to compete. He meets. With, he he says he's yeah yeah. I, I got, okay. yeah, I got that. Okay, the Miz comes down in the ring attire. Dolph comes out bent over in street clothes. Uh, he calls him as a coward because he know he knew he didn't have a chance against him at SummerSlam, so he sick over on him. Dolph says he's not medically cleared. Uh, before Dolph can leave, he rushes to Miz and beats him up. The referee rings the bell, and we have a match. Miz makes a comeback after being on the ropes for a while. Dolph tries to super kick Miz. Miz counters into the figure four where Dolph eventually taps. And Dolph is in the ring talking smack to Miz as he walks back up the ramp. He says Miz isn't even the best wrestler in his family, which is a lie because Maurice is way worse. Uh, Miz comes back to the ring and gives Dolph a skull crushing finale, and that's the end of that. I like this version of Dolph Ziggler, where he's not trying to cut like the great promo where he's actually doing like a character of his old promo. It's actually entertaining now. At first, last year when he was doing this, it seemed kind of forced. But this year when he's doing it, it seems like, you know, he's got a much better grasp of it. Like I said, last week when he came out to that Goldberg entrance, I fucking popped huge. Like, oh, you got me. (laughs) Let's see here. Interview with Becky Lynch. She gives Nanny her props and says she's coming to take out everyone who has done her wrong. And then she leaves. Alrighty, so Rey Mysterio versus Andrade oh, 2 out of 3 oh, falls. Oh, this, is, this is where we see Elias getting speared by Edge at SummerSlam. Okay, well that's fine. Uh, he, he knows that someone will interrupt when he calls them out, but no one comes out. And then that's when Ricochet arrives. Ricochet says people interrupt him because he sucks. Elias yeah. says that he's going to embarrass Ricochet tonight. So we have Ricochet versus Elias. Ricochet hits an enziguri. The suicide dive then misses. Elias grabs a guitar and the ref stops him, allowing Ricochet to hit a super kick. And then the sunset flip follows for the win as Ricochet defeats Elias. Continue. Nice. All right. So Andrade goes to work on Ray immediately. Oh, two out of three, two out of three falls pitch. Uh, Zelina Vega distracts Ray. Andrade rolls him up. What happened? Distraction. Poor distraction. Oh, distraction. Uh, Z- Zelina distracts Ray. Andrade rolls him up. Zelina holds Andrade's legs for leverage. Andrade wins the first fall. The second fall is back and forth. Andrade tries to ram Ray into the corner, but Ray moves out of the way. Uh, Ray does a really cool move. He flips over the apron and gives kind of like a modified Canadian destroyer. Did you see that, Don? Yes, I did. That was pretty cool. They always uh, Ray, break out some type of destroyer in, in when they wrestle each other. Yeah. Ray wants to go for a 619, but Ray gets misdirected thanks to Zelina standing there. Uh, he goes for it anyway, misses the 619, but then hits it a little while later. He goes for a dive. Andrade puts his knees up, hits Ray with a hammerlock DDT, and gets the clean, sweet victory. I am shocked. I am shooketh. Um, <laughs> as the caption for Street Fighter would say, Go home and be a family man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin is interviewed by Michael Cole via Skype. I was joking at first when I said that, but then I noticed they were actually using Skype. Hey, man, they're just like the rest of us. They got to navigate the internet with the same technologies that you and I do. <laughs> uh, he talked about Seth Rollins' performance against Brock. He was impressed by Seth going out there and not at 100%. He talked some more, then the segment just ends. Rey Mysterio is interviewed. He is upset. He's never lost two falls in a row. He doesn't know what this means for his career. He has a family to support. And once again, they're going back to the WWE performers are broke and live check to check. They keep doing this over and over and it's really annoying. 
Uh, you'll see her backstage. They talk about AJ's match tonight. Uh, Paul Heyman gets interviewed by the uh, interview girl. Uh, he mocks her and says that he has an exclusive, and her being a sports journalist has none. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wow. They skipped a lot. They skipped the best match of the whole damn night. Oh, yeah, which one? Go for uh, it. Drew McIntyre and Cedric Alexander. Uh, they had a match. Uh, Drew says that he promises to end Cedric's fairy tale. I'm going to take my boot and I'm going to cave his skull in. And then his little fairy tale will be over. So the match. Drew looks for the Claymore, but Cedric Alexander collapsed. Drew picks him up and Alexander cradles Drew for a two count. Drew heads up top and Alexander hits the Spanish fly for a two count. Drew fights off the lumbar check. Alexander counters the inverted Alabama slam into a victory roll. Drew then takes out Cedric with the Claymore and he gets the win. This was good as shit. Uh, Drew McIntyre took everything. He took the clay. He took the Spanish fly. He took the uh, lumbar check on the outside of the ring. It said he got all his shit in. This was a hell of a match. Mm-hmm. And then Bobby Roode beat No Way Jose. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, Paul Heyman mocks the, the, the sports journalist. He says that Brock Lesnar doesn't get a rematch against Seth. Rollins. He has no words and simply leaves. Um, here comes the best part, in my opinion. Maddie's in the ring. She has her arm in a sling. She admits that Becky was oh, the better oh, woman. Oh, your, your favorite part that you missed, though. The Revival faces the Lucha House Party. The Revival take control right away, working over Lindsay Dorado and picking up the near falls. That's when R-Truth is chased by the 24-7 jobbers through the match, leading to the match being stopped. The Revival hit the heart attack, and they both pin R-Truth, so they are currently the co-24-7 champions. Kalisto hits Salida Del Sol, and Carmella helps Truth win the title back. Truth and Carmella, they run away, and the whole gang of people are like running after him. Drake Maverick is running after him, and he trips. It's so funny. Uh, R-Truth sneaks back into the arena, and then he heads backstage underneath the Titantron. He claims that he's a 72-time 7-Eleven European TV champion. That's when Elias sneaks up from behind, lays truth out with the guitar, and Elias is your new 24-7 champion. Okay. <laughs> Miss Didi Jane, your thoughts? Uh, he deserves. <laughs> yes, yes. That's like, they did that strictly for Miss Didi Jane because she missed the edge thing and they always be treating Elias so wrong. They do treat Elias wrong. And my thing is, he did not insult the whole of what was it, Seattle? He did not hurt them people's feelings just for y'all to treat him like animal. Like, he deserves everything good in life. For me, in my opinion. I see. Okay, so are we done with the foolishness? It's not foolishness. You can get to the main course, sir. All right, so Natty's in the ring. She has her arm in a sling. She missed the picking as a better woman. <laughs> and she out-wrestled her. Uh, she said she would not change a thing, and she meant every word she said about Becky. She vows to have another match against Becky, but for now, it's sharing time. She said she had a dream where her guide spoke to her and said he was proud of her. And it's been one year since her dad passed away. But all of a sudden, music hits. Banks attack 
Nikki Natalia. I've been telling everybody all along. And Banks now unloading on the injured Natalia. New blue hair, same true colors. moment for Natalia. Sasha Banks has come out here and is now attacking the already injured Natalia. is through. Sasha Banks out here to make some sort of statement. Oh, no. The lights are still on. Of course Sasha Banks isn't done. Everything in the universe has to be about the boss. Natalia couldn't even have a moment about her father. Oh, here comes someone who knows Sasha very, very well. The man, the Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch and Sasha now in a brawl on Monday Night Raw. And remember what Becky said earlier, I'm coming after anybody that's done me wrong. And Becky Lynch now going after Banks. Becky said big props, big respect to Natalia after their fight last night. And now a right hand by Banks is for the champion. Sasha Banks has returned with a vengeance, with an evil, evil vengeance here tonight. Natalia taken out and now Becky Lynch, chair to the spine. Again and again and again and again. Sasha, a relentless attack. God, somebody's got to come out here and stop this. Trying to stop the boss. The disrespect she shows everybody. I have no idea what has got into Banks here tonight, but there's got to be some sort of explanation. It's not new, Cole. She's been this person forever. But the money is here. Sasha made it boss time tonight. Now, everybody's all upset because Sasha hit Becky in the head with the chair. Oh, so what? It, she it, did? She hit her in the, I didn't even notice that. I didn't she, know she hit her in the maybe, head. Maybe that was edited out from the Hulu version. She didn't hit her in the head like you're thinking, like Cody oh. Rose got hit in the head. She was hitting oh. her in the back, and Becky lifted her head up when Sasha was oh, coming okay. down. So the oh, chair hit her in the head. Becky's fault. Well. She'll, right. mm-hmm. She'll be all right. But, oh, my gosh, the uh, MAGA smart Fanboys are so mad. Oh, we had oh, one. Because, because they, they, find... she touched her Irish queen. Oh, they just hate Sasha Banks for well, the, reasons uh, that for, you know why. For breathing, right? When she, uh, when one of their faves can't have the definitive match of the year. What was that? 2017. Her and Bailey uh, take over Brooklyn for all of wrestling. Then holla at me. But until then, so what? Fights aren't supposed to be, you know, it's a fight. It's simulated combat. All fights aren't smooth ballet. So, oh, she botches and she said, oh, okay, so you're, so you're, your fave does too. But they ain't got no mass of the year underneath their belt like Sasha does. Well, I mean, really, they all do. I mean, nobody's perfect. Right. But, yes, this was awesome. Miss Didi Janet, let's get a fashion cast on uh, the wig, the, post, the pre and post wig reveal. Because everybody always ready, uh, what sleep though, and 
you know, our normal fashion <laughs> cast uh, tweeters, boy, they was getting, they was dragging, but they was like, whoa, okay, whew. Yes, yes, yes. The pink wig was fluffy, big, bulky. Ugly. Was it obvious? It was. It was obvious. It wasn't correct. And once she took it off, it was like, ah, that makes sense. That's that's why that looks like that. And I enjoy the blue color. I think it's very nice. Um, shout out to Mia Yim for not letting the trolls get to her. They're talking about, oh, look, it's Sasha. She got your blue hair. She's like, it's just a hair color. Oh, I saw that. She looks yeah. great. And it's like, yes, yeah, she will not put the black girls against each other. No, no, no. Over there with your bullshit. So, yeah. I like the blue. It feels different. We got the BAE Sasha, the NXT, the Bay version, the best of everything version of Sasha Banks. I can't wait for this to manifest itself. Hopefully they slow roll it. They give her the match with Natty first, and then they get, you know, build up to the match with Becky. Don't just throw the match with Becky out there. Uh-huh. Okay, so next I have an Alexa Bliss and Nikki cross interview. Is that the, what you have? The Viking Raiders beat up some local jobbers continuing okay. in their, uh, you know, squash match victory. All right. Okay, so uh, Alexa and Nikki interviewed. They will defend their titles against Kabuki Theater or whatever they're called. Jesus. Uh, let's see. The Theater versus Alex and Bliss. Uh, can, can, can I ask you a question? Why? Did, did you write your notes out on paper? No, I typed it out <laughs> and then I printed it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just like Jim Cornette. I'm just saying you got paper, physical paper in front of you. I hear it. Yes. Flipping. Yeah, you're very old school that way. Well, I have things going on on my computer. I'm looking for a new wallpaper. Gotcha. Found some good ones. I'll share them later. <laughs> this, this All right, so. With Naomi. Or Sasha Banks. Oh, that. No. No, no, it's just regular ones. Oh, okay. Those are in in another folder. Okay, so uh, Paige cuts a promo with her via her Snapchat story or whatever they're using now. Uh, She knows her team will win and bring home the gold. And that was literally it. Yeah, she's got a... uh, They found another herniated disc in her neck, so she had to have surgery. Ah. So, match, match, match. Wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Alexa hits Twisted Bliss on Kyrie, and the match is over. The two ladies retain. I would like to see an Alexa Bliss versus Kyrie Sane set a match, series of matches. Because they, they're about the same height. They're about the same weight. You know, Alexa Bliss is really small. So, it's actually kind of hard to find, you know, people who are, you know, physically the same height and weight as her. I think they could have some really good matches against each other one on one. Yeah, her and that uh, Max Mini. Oh gosh. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, now it's time for the main event. Is it time for the main event on your sheet? Yes, as well? sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We're there. <laughs> so Seth Rollins, AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins. It's not title, right? Because I didn't see them lift the belt up. Yes, yeah, non-title. Okay. So Seth Rollins starts the match with taped up ribs. Styles tries a Styles Clash on the apron, but Seth counters out of it. Seth looks weak, mostly because of his injury, but also because he's tired after taking a whoop from Brock. Uh, Seth goes up for the oh, Seth goes up for the top. Anderson distracts the ref, and Gallows takes Seth down. The referee ejects Anderson and Gallows. Seth tries for a roll up, off the distraction, but only a two count. Anderson and Gallows come back in and beat up Seth with a DQ finish. Uh, Ricochet comes out to go after the OC. Gallows and Anderson get a hold of him and drop Ricochet with the boot of doom. The three men attack Seth. AJ wants to set up Seth for a Styles Clash off the second rope. But suddenly, Braun Strowman comes out and he blows right through them. The three men scatter and Braun is standing tall with Ricochet and Seth Rollins. Braun grabs the Universal title and hands it to Rollins, but not before taking a quick gander at it. The two men shake hands. And that is your Monday Night Raw. So, Mr. Eugene, they are yes. interjecting your fave, Braun Strowman, yeah. back into a meaningful position. Were you shocked to see him be the third man to come out and make the save? Yes, I was. Because it had been a while since we had seen Has him. Has he not been around for, for a while? It's, it's been a, a few weeks at least. Because the last time I saw him was with, was with Maria. Yeah, that's it. He's just been doing backstage stuff. He hasn't done anything really physical. Uh, do you think that they're trying to set up 
Braun versus Seth. So that means that Braun's going to get him to trust him and then turn on him. <laughs> um, I mean, you never know. You, you never can tell with, with them. As long as it's something meaningful and he's a winner, I think I'm okay with it. I agree we'll with see. that. We'll see. We'll- they got to build up some challengers because nobody's really standing out right now. For I'm you, uh, uh, Andrani is going to be a main event dude by next year. Hopefully, the end of this year. Yeah, he's building. He's building that way because he's beating the brakes off of Rey Mysterio every time they wrestle. <laughs> right. All right, Sam. Everybody's been waiting. Your sour patch rating for <laughs> Monday Night uh, Raw. I'm gonna have to give this one a seven only because it didn't seem uh, it didn't seem to flow as well as they had it the last time I watched. Right. It just seemed a little disorganized. I don't know if that was because I was watching the Hulu version or what, but it just didn't see it just didn't there was no flow to it. It had a little bit more talking than they've had in Yes, the like past I noticed like weeks. before you got to an actual match on like I mean Samoa Joe and Sammy didn't really count. So there were one, two, just on, on the Hulu version, one, two, three, four, four talking segments and the uh, Samoa Joe half match or whatever mm-hmm. until we got to the Miz versus Dolph Ziggler, which wasn't really all that. Well, yeah, it was okay. Yeah, but the, again, your version didn't take into consideration the best match on the show, which was the uh, Cedric Alexander and Drew McIntyre. So you missed out on that one. I would have gl- I would have gladly treated that tall this match. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Missy e. Jeanette, do you have a rating for this week? Oh, we can give it three and a half. Okay. Out of five, right? Yeah, out of five. Not out of ten, that'd be rude. Yeah, out of five. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I give it the same. Three out of five three and a half out of five. Yeah, it was an average show. Night after a pay per view, you know, they're, they're not gonna really give you too much. Just Especially because. one of the one of the big four, there wasn't really much there. Right, right. I'm excited for King of the Ring, though. I want to see wh- you know where they go. Yeah, it'll be interesting, uh, just with the history of the what it means to win it and what it well, what it meant to win it. I don't know if it will have the same kind of springboard uh, this time around, but if it does, whoever does actually get it, man big things should be I mean, in the past it was sort of like an unofficial money in the bank because you knew whoever got it was gonna challenge for that title like yeah soon. yeah i'm excited yeah. to see uh how they match up in uh and and what the different matches are so uh i know you got to get out so you shout out some thank yous all righty shout out to you guys shout out to uh dd don uh greg out there in Fatherland. Uh, shout out to Classic and shout out to some other. Shout out to Quan. He's been bugging me on Twitter. Uh, let's see here. And shout out to. I forgot her name. <laughs> no, that's a new friend that I made on Twitter. I just. Uh, I don't want to use. I don't want to put her government out there. That's why. Oh, smart. You're right. Uh, no, I forgot her what her at was. But anyway, shout out to Lady Nikki as well. And that is it. And I am out. And we'll see you uh, soon. All right. Thanks for joining us, Sam. Hi, Hi, Didi. Hi, Sam. All right, Miss Didi Jonet. It's time to hear about what happened on the Blue Brand. Smackdown Matters. All right. What had happened was um, Kevin Owens is here to speak. He gets the heroes welcome in Toronto for vanquishing Shane. And says Sunday was the five-year anniversary of signing his WWE contract. He stepped into the ring with the best, some of who he looked up to. And on Sunday, he beat someone who claimed to be the best in the world. He will always remember it as his whole family was there. Everyone supported him in kicking Shane's ass, and that's what he did. But hitting him with the stunner was a moment he will never forget, thanks to the fans. However, now he has his sights set on King of the Ring. It's something he always loved and is thrilled to be a part of this year. Winning it would mean as much to him as any championship to be named along with Austin, Edge, Bret Hart, Kurt Angle, etc. Shane arrives, and Kevin asks why, as we all did. Shane calls his win a tainted victory. Um, Shane gets asshole chance, and 
he shows Kevin low blowing him at SummerSlam. That leads to you deserve it chance from the fans. Shane says it wasn't fair competition, and Kevin mocks him for the Mean Street Posse days. <laughs> I remember those. And say he stood up for what he believed in and fought to keep his job. He just wanted to shut Shane's stupid face. Shane says Kevin will always be known as a cheater and that he should be unemployed. Then Shane, thre- Shane threatens to come to the ring, but says he will show restraint because Kevin will compete tonight. Shane then shows what Kevin did to Elias at SummerSlam. He says he gave the He gave Elias the night off due to this and says that Elias was an official referee for that match. Therefore, as you know, you can't put your hands on no ref like that. And he is finding Kevin, ooh, 100 U.S. dollars. Bitch. Kevin says that is a lot to him and his family, and that's crap. Shane leaves. Kevin follows. Kevin confronts Shane backstage. Shane threatens to sue him if he attacks him. So instead of that... He throws something at the TV and he's like, add another 5,000 to my bill then, bitch. I may or may not have added the bitch. (laughs) Do you like the angle that they, like Sam was talking about how the wrestlers, you know, get upset over getting fined $100,000? I don't mind it because regardless of how much money they have, it ain't enough that 100,000 is nothing. Right. right, right. So, like, what you mean, a hundred thousand dollars? Now, like a five thousand dollar fine. I'm sure they're like, okay, okay, girl, five k, a hundred thousand. Yeah, I might be talking to HR or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we need to go to mediation at some point because this is just untenable. No, but how do you feel about it? I like it. I think it's it's Vince McMahon's way of trying to kind of relate to the normal person. <laughs> oh, sure. You know what I mean? Because it's clearly not a regular job structure. Right. And, you know, like when you were reading the review, you know, you came across the number 100,000. It's like, <gasps> that's breathtaking to a, you know, nine to five, two week, 40 hour a week. Hey, thank you for my two weeks of vacation every year. Right type of worker. <laughs> if that ain't what we do, yeah, it's like who a hundred thousand boy. That's like two hard years of work. Right. And you want me to just give that to you at one time? Right. Oh, oh because I hit my coworker. <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. In okay. A, next in a space where ahead. we in a place in a space where we are allowed to hit each other. Right, like we was in the ring and I hit him, and you char- you charged me a hundred k, really? Okay, but yeah. Anyway, next match was Charlotte versus Ember. Um, Ember Moon lays in a flurry of kicks and a rolling elbow. There's a bicycle kick for two. Moon then follows with a goal breaker for two. She heads up top. Charlotte slams her to the mat and then misses a charge. Moon cradles Charlotte for another two. Lays in some strikes. They trade hits. Charlotte follows with a running boot and the figure eight to get the win. Yeah, the normal Charlotte match. Nothing to see here. Yeah. There are highlights of the recent near-death experiences of Roman Reigns because you need to see them on both shows. Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan are arriving. Daniel Bryan says there is no question now that someone is out to get Reigns, but he and Rowan had nothing to do with it, despite Murphy's false accusations because Murphy is a liar. Daniel Bryan doesn't blame her for lying since Reigns had him pressed against the wall because you would fold as well. Murphy clearly gave the wrong name. Bryan denies their involvement, says it's all the fault of the fans and society as a whole. I don't know what we got to do with any of that shit, but, but okay. He was saying how you can put stuff out on Twitter that's not true. People mm-hmm. see it on Twitter, run with it, mm-hmm. and then they, you know, accuse you like you like it is true. Basically, oh, basically, this rumor, uh-huh. rumor mill. Well, out. basically, it was a shot at Donald Trump. Oh, oh, I like that man. <laughs> anyway, he said that tonight they will prove that they had nothing to do with Roman Reigns' assaults. Shane is with Samoa Joseph backstage, and Samoa Joseph offers his services to face on what's tonight. Don't know why, but that's cool too. Alistair Black wonders who has a debt to pay and who will pay up. He will pay his in his isolation, and he wants someone to knock on his door. He's a very selfish person. Why don't you just leave your room? 
You're slowly coming around to my side on this. Like I, I do agree with you. It, it's like it's it's interesting, but to to another, it's it's like the nerve of you. Like, why are you making people come find you? Just leave wherever the little dark ass room you at. Get off. Get out the boiler room, and go to the ring. But no, somebody gotta come find you. Somebody come and come knock on your door. This is not a date, honey bunches. <laughs> I'm going to knock on your damn door. Like I said, I swear Cesaro found found him by accident. He probably did. He was probably trying to have a rendezvous with somebody else. I was like, oh, it's occupied? What you doing in here? Why the lights off like that? Why you got candles in the corner? Like, listen. I don't know about that, Alistair. First of all, he's probably trying to set up a love nest for him and his wife on the low low. See? Listen. Y'all think it's one thing. It's a whole other thing. <laughs> anyway, so there's a match between Roman and Buddy Murphy. Oh, Roman said hip first into the barricade. That punch right on the cheek of Reigns. Oh, man. And you have to imagine if Buddy Murphy was, in fact, forced to lie in the heat of the moment at the hands of Roman Reigns. Buddy Murphy's probably embarrassed. He's probably humiliated. He's probably very angry at Roman Reigns. But at the same time, maybe he's- Watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, face first into the desk. I mean, to have somebody question your- Breaks the count. Your honesty, to declare you a liar. Oh, what a right by Reigns. That is one of the ultimate insults. Buddy Murphy could be incensed right now. Yeah, but but think about Uh this. Oh my God, get out of here. Oh, Buddy Murphy. My gosh. Roman Reigns just manhandled Buddy Murphy. Murphy is hurt. Buddy Murphy is in the sights of Roman Reigns. Rock and roll. Roman ready to strike. I went for the Superman punch. Buddy Murphy. Oh, an elbow. The Australian retreating to the corner. Oh, shoulder oh, first into the post. Buddy Murphy's got him. He's got him. He's got him. He feels the wall. Oh, and a kick out. What a shocking upset that would have been tonight for Buddy Murphy. Would have stolen it from Reigns. Oh, oh and Reigns over the top. Oh. And now Murphy kick right to the chest. Trying to keep Roman Reigns at bay. But he's not afraid to fly. Over the top, down goes Reigns. Tremendous impact. Yeah. Buddy Murphy wants to finish this. And Roman Reigns preventing any more offense from Buddy Murphy. Just an instinctual what response. Right there. there goes Murphy into the barricade. What a brutal fall. Murphy crashing down into the barricade, but still on one knee. Buddy, not going to quit tonight. In the meantime, Roman trying to will himself on. Look out, look out. Superman punch. Roman Reigns on the move. Look out. Spear. Oh, my God. Good grief. Roman Reigns, simply ferocious, puts down Buddy Murphy. Here is your winner, Roman Reigns. You see that nod by Roman Reigns. He learned exactly who Buddy Murphy is tonight. The secret's out, ladies and gentlemen. It was a great match. Uh, Buddy Murphy, definitely. Same thing like um, Drew uh, Drew McIntyre and Cedric Alexander. Roman let Buddy Murphy get all his shit in. Took a lot of Buddy Murphy's, uh, you know, high impact moves. And it's the best Roman Reigns match he's had since he came back from being sick. So it was a win-win. The people were cheering. They were into the match. They were cheering when Roman won. And they had a lot Mm -hmm. of respect for Buddy Murphy after the match. So... You know, so they, everybody wins. Yeah, if they would have let Buddy Murphy win, now that would have really <laughs> opened up some eyeballs, but not quite there yet. But yeah, bridge too far, bridge too far. Well, see, at least Cedric Alexander got to beat uh, Drew once, and then you know Drew got him back. Drew attacked him and then beat him yeah. in the match. So, but especially what's about to happen, he he couldn't have won. Right. Like, right. Yeah. Well, he can't could win. have. It would have nah, not. you can't you can't win and then get punk with Daniel Bryan all up in your nose face <laughs> like that. That ain't how that works. They couldn't do that, so that they were right on that part. Um, but we'll get there. Uh, Kofi talks with Xavier, he, who is upset that he's not in the King of the Ring. They comment on the revival's promo, claiming claiming that they have never ruined the tag division. They didn't. Kofi says he attacked Orton at SummerSlam because he crossed the line, but. Now is your 
Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joseph match. He fights off the superflex. Kevin does and hits the senton for a two count. Joe fights off the stunner, gets the clutch, but Kevin counters out into the pop up power bomb. Elias, who's not supposed to be there, pulls out the ref, distra- ah, distracts Kevin, and Joe cradles Kevin for the win. How did we feel? Was, did we care? Drinking. I just mm-hmm. hate that they keep using Samoa Joe in this role. Mm-hmm. He has to get over, man. I mean, mm-hmm. he needs to be a killer. And I don't know what they want us to do. Do they want us to cheer Samoa Joe? Or do they want us to boo Samoa Joe? It looked like he's going to team up with Roman. It's like, okay, we get ready to cheer Samoa Joe. And then right. they flip it over. And now he's going up against Kevin. And it's like, yeah. okay, so are we supposed to now boo Samoa Joe? Yeah, and it's like volunteering, not even like got recruited into it, but like said, oh, I can do it for you. Right, right. So I'm kind of confused at, at where his direction is going. Kind of confused at where this whole Roman thing is going, but we'll Same talk too. about this a, a little bit later. We'll get there when we get there, I suppose. Um, in the back, Daniel Bryan clears out the locker room of everybody except Buddy Murphy. Um, he has Buddy either take a seat or he's sitting wherever he's sitting. They pull up a chair. Daniel Bryan is, what's that word? Adjacent. Let's go with that one. To Buddy Murphy sitting on his side. And Eric Rowan is directly in front of Buddy Murphy with his legs in between his other legs. So when I tell you there is maybe 10 inches of space in between the three of them, it's tight, it's close, it's it's clearly uncomfortable. Daniel Bryan wants Buddy to admit that he lied, but he won't. And when I tell you he wants him to admit it, I'm talking nose on cheek, sweat <laughs> from brow on the other brow. Like, where is your sense of personal space? I, I would have been so uncomfortable in that moment. Like, I would have leaned all the way back, like, please don't touch me. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just so close oh my god but anyway buddy won't admit that he lied so Rowan kicks his ass Daniel Bryan yells at him so eventually buddy does say that he lied but everybody knows that you can't necessarily believe you know a confession brought on by assault so who knows if buddy lied or not but we end up with him saying that he did and the Rowan, plot thickens dun 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 right so Rowan, Roman, I mean, is looking for Rowan and Daniel Bryan. Randy Orton arrives and says, Kofi, how can he come out here and cheerlead his boys when he ran from a fight at SummerSlam? Kofi couldn't beat him 10 years ago and he can't beat him now. Worst of all, he ran from a fight in front of his wife and kids. Orton will give him a chance to prove him wrong and wants them both to join this match the um, Revival versus New Day match and make it a six-man match. And would you believe that is exactly what happened? So At least the wrestlers well, made, you know, just instead of like coming down there and then all of a sudden, oh, guess what, man? At least they like, yeah. you know, Like, we'll themselves. start a fight and then you'll give us a match. Now it's right. just like, why don't we just make it a match? Right. Since our friends are already, since our friends are already wrestling, let's just, yeah. you know, jump in here anyway. And we're already fighting. Why not? You know? <laughs> Which fair. So Woods tries to fight for a tag, manages to send Dawson to the post and tags in Big E. Big E runs wild with suplexes, hits the running splash, and Dash then cradles him for two. There's a tag to Kofi, but the revival cut off Big E as Kofi flies in with a high cross. The boom drop connects. Kofi follows with a dive onto Orton. Woods fights back with one arm, but gets pinned with the shatter machine. Oh, so that means the revival won. They attack post-match, but Kofi fights them off, and then Orton lays him out with an RKO. Um, there's also one for Xavier Woods, and then another for Big E, and then Orton has another on Kofi and stands tall. You didn't see this, but Xavier Woods, he had an awesome cosplay. I think it was at SummerSlam. He looked like Stevie Wonder, the hotter than July. Show. Uh, cover. I a picture, yeah. He should have saved that for Halloween. <laughs> I mean, he could always do it again because those that was inspired. It was yeah, great. yeah. I wonder how long it took for him to sit down and get his hair did like that. Well, if it was one person, who knows how long it 
if you're quick, it could take two hours. If you're not quick, it could take about three. But then you got to add the beads. And who knows? That's more than a notion. Mm-hmm. And then you could have somebody else hopping on your head. But then who knows if the braids would be the same size. So it probably was just one person. But listen, it's a lot. <laughs> However, that is not the end of your smacky downy for the evening. Daniel Bryan wants an apology from Roman and then says he will bring Reigns, the real culprit, next week following their own investigation. So we have things to look forward to on SmackDown. So what I heard and what's been going around Mm -hmm. is that Buddy Murphy, wrong place, wrong time. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even supposed to be in the damn shot but he was and so they had to kind of in involve him in the thing because they had to explain who was that guy walking around oh <laughs> well, well why they tell him not to get out the shot to see that they fall well i guess they did it on the one take or you know what i'm saying so they that's so interesting because it's like that didn't have to be live which means you could have did it saw he was in it and be like not do it again Right, but I guess they yeah. wanted the 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 authenticness of that. But yeah, so that's the reason why Buddy Murphy's even in this whole thing right now. So it's no telling where they're about to go with who did this. Hopefully, it's somebody brand new. Like, I don't know who I want it to be, but I want it to be fun. True. I want it to be something interesting. Yeah, the plans have been is Daniel Bryan. That's what you know. All the insider talk has been, but I don't know. Once that starts to come out and WWE starts to hear it, you know they like to go changing up shit. They so. like to change it, but my thing is, I think I want them to change it because that's not interesting. Right. Like it, it may, it may, maybe it would have been before. But now that Daniel Bryan done put his nose up all up in Buddy Murphy, <laughs> Buddy Murphy's face, that's not interesting. Now they both need to be innocent of all charges. At least that's what I want. Yeah, yeah. I wanted something. I want somebody different, too. I wanted to be somebody new, somebody fresh. Give Roman a, a new chance to, you know, go against somebody that he hasn't necessarily wrestled before. Mm, who could it be? Who could it be? I don't know. Could be anybody. Really. It could be anybody. <laughs> that's the that's the one good thing about it, where you know, if you don't necessarily have an idea right now, or if they're kind of making it up as they go, that's the one advantage they have is it could be anybody. Hmm. So there's no there's nobody to tell you it's wrong because it's like, well, why wouldn't it be that person? Right. Exactly. They the only thing they have to come up with. Is once they identify who it's going to be, they just mm-hmm. have to make sure they have one hell of a promo set up for the reason why. Yeah. Because if they if they if they come out with I just did it for the rock, <laughs> like Rakeem, <Rakita, laughs> that ain't gonna work in 2019. Uh, your rating for your uh, addition to SmackDown. Uh, let's let's go with three stars yeah same as raw 3.5 you know same deal uh, after the pay-per-view not too much going on but a strong match between buddy murphy and uh roman and then the the stuff with randy and kofi is kind of interesting the 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 two rkos to kofi laying out the new day with the rko revival and new day look like they may be getting ready to set up something where they get ready to have some some uh some matches against each other so that should be a lot of fun hopefully kofi gets this thing straightened out with randy orton and gets a clean decisive victory mm-hmm. we're gonna go into our last review for this marathon weekend of wrestling nxt fandango and tyler breeze they took on the forgotten sons Cutler tags in, and the Hurricane Rana and Flying Headbutt follows for a two count. Blake tags back in, and Fandango fights them off. Fandango dumps Cutler to the outside, and then he does Blake as well. Fandango then follows with the tope. We get the double teams by Fandango, and Tyler Breeze, which leads to the slingshot elbow, and Fandango covers the Forgotten Sons, and Fandango and Tyler Breeze get the win. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Fandango's music still bangs. <laughs> I, I actually watched this the, this morning, uh, and I was doing the Fandango dance around the house. Like, you know what? It's been like four years since I really heard it. It's like this. It's still awesome. <laughs> uh, then we started getting highlights from the TakeOver show. So we get highlights of the North American Championship match afterwards. Uh, Pete Dunn comments on the loss. He says that he should have won, but the Velveteen Dream did what he had to do to retain. He said, but he'll do what he needs to do to take the title from the Velveteen Dream. Then we get highlights from the NXT Breakout Tournament. Then there are highlights from the Street Profits defending their titles against Undisputed Era. The Undisputed Era comments on the loss, ranting that they want to talk with Regal. They claim that they were screwed and the illegal man was pinned. And so they go back on the video when uh, Angelo Dawkins, he spears, he runs into Kyle O'Reilly and he, Kyle O'Reilly bounces back into the ropes. And when he bounces back into the ropes, it looks like Bobby Fish tags him on the shoulder. So mm-hmm. Kyle O'Reilly gets speared, boom. Bobby Fish gets knocked off the ring apron. And then that's when Montez Ford hits the frog splash and they get the win. And Kyle O'Reilly was like, he pinned the wrong man. I wasn't even legal. So we'll see if that causes a rematch for uh, an upcoming NXT or if they're going to extend it out to the next takeover. And then we get a video package on Io Shirai's heel turn with an awesome like music video. And then they show highlights of her win over Candice LeRae. Then we get the Baszler and Mia Yim uh, highlights. After the match, Shayna's walking backstage. Uh, they want to interview her. And all she does when she walks by the interview girl that says, and still. Then they show us highlights from Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole. Then they show us highlights from the uh, Killian Dane, Matt Riddle brawl. Now it's time for the finals of the NXT breakout tournament as Jordan Miles, a.k.a. ACH, faced off against Cameron Grimes, a.k.a. Trevor Lee. Grimes stuns Miles off the ropes. Miles fires back, and Grimes hits the running splash. Excuse me, running Spanish fly for a two count. Grimes follows with the ground and pound, and then picks Miles up. Miles counters the running double stomp. Grimes fires back with the super kick. Miles fires back, hits the brain buster, followed by the 450 splash for the win. And Jordan Miles wins the NXT Breakout Tournament. Then Stephen Rico comes down, and gives him his open contract for his championship match of his choosing. As everybody knows, I was I'm not a big fan of Jordan Miles. Definitely not a fan of Jordan Miles winning. Definitely not a fan of the way they set this match up. It's Cameron Grimes was whooping his ass the whole night, and then he pulls out like three moves and fucking wins. But oh well. So you know, good for ACH and all his smiling. He had a grin and full swing out there uh, for these people. So. We'll see where this goes. We'll see who he decides to go up against. But Jordan Miles, a.k.a. ACH, is the winner of the inaugural NXT breakout tournament. And he has won a title match of his choice. So we'll see what goes from there. Not much of an episode of NXT, just a highlight package show. That highlight, the video package of Io Shirai, though, that was like a music video with her like screaming and has different little shots of her inserted not really match action but just her kind of her new heel persona that was really cool Mm -hmm. that was really well done now for my before we sign off for my new japan folks we had the end of the g1 climax on monday but in the middle of that we had the greatest moment i've seen in wrestling for the whole weekend Kenta, a.k.a. Hideo Hatami, he has joined the Bullet Club. He has turned his back on Shibata, and Shibata did not let that go quietly as Shibata jumped in the ring and was whooping the shit out of Kenta. He (laughs) beat him down in the corner, did the running drop kick in the corner until the Bullet Club used their numbers game, and they finally thwarted the threat of Shibata. Uh, Kenta disrespected the man by sitting on his chest cross-legged, which is Shibata's famous pose in the ring. The significance of this is that Shibata almost died two years ago in his final match against Okada, a championship match in which 
Uh, he suffered like a hematoma on his brain. He almost literally died. People didn't think he was going to be able to walk again. His motor skills and things are all just out of whack. Just a really, really, really bad situation. And uh, a lot of people, like I said, didn't know if he's going to walk again, let alone wrestle. So he's made a couple of appearances, but nothing physical. Just, you know, come out, talk, wave to the crowd. He came out at the beginning of the of, uh, before the G1 to announce Kenta was coming and being a part of New Japan and a part of the G1. So to see him come out here and be physical was really like, oh my gosh. So I don't know if he's going to be able to come back and wrestle, if this is going to be an angle where they're going to lead to a match. But yeah, I was highly emotional because Shibata is my favorite New Japan wrestler of all time. And like I said, it totally sucked that his final match was such a classic, but he literally head-butted Okada and finished the match. And then after the match, he's walking to the back, gets through the curtain and collapses because he's got like bleeding on the brain and his brain is all swelling. And so they had to like put him in a coma for like a week. Yeah, oh, it was, yeah, yeah, it was super serious. And uh, the people in Japan love this dude. You should, I mean, the first time he came back after the initial match and we hadn't seen him for like four months and he just walked out just to show that, you know, just to walk and show his face. It was literally people in the crowd crying. You could see like grown men, women just crying in the crowd just at the mere sight of him. And then, uh-huh. then when he was in action and he was kicking Kenta's ass, they were screaming and shrilling. And like what they do is they stomp their feet. They don't necessarily clap their hands. They stomp their feet. And mm. that's all you heard was just a <laughs> of them stomping their feet. It was, it was awesome. It was awesome. So check that out on the what we were watching hashtag along with all of the matches from this year's tournament that were stand out. And do a search for Cast a Strong Style, what we are watching, and uh, you'll find all the standout matches. Check out Ishii versus Shingo. It's probably the best match of the whole tournament, even better than the finals. These two guys just laid it into each other. Lots of great matches, a bunch of four-star matches, a few five-star matches. It's definitely worth your time to peruse some of those matches that I've staked out, found the links for, and put up on Twitter through the what we're watching hashtag for people who are like, what's the big deal about the G1? I don't get it. Yeah, it's the best for 35 days. It's the best wrestling in the world. It will make Monday Night Raw and look like, like, what is this? <laughs> like, I can't believe I spent my time watching Monday Night Raw after you watch if you watch the G1 earlier in the day. But, yeah, can't wait for um, the new New Japan stuff that's going to be coming out. Uh, Super J Cup, Amazing Red is going to be uh, going up against Will Ospreay. It's Amazing Red's last uh, big time event he's going to do is he's getting ready to retire this year. Juice and Thunder Liger is also going to be on this card. This card is going to be taking place out on the West Coast. This is going to be a three day tournament. So it's going to take place in Seattle, San Francisco, and then the final is going to be in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, a lot of good matches uh, set up. It's a, it's a uh, junior heavyweight tournament, and so it's a lot of the good junior heavyweights from New Japan will be involved in it. And uh, after watching all these heavyweight matches in the G1, it'll be cool to see the juniors flying around and doing all their crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, make sure you guys check out the uh, Road to All Out. From All Elite Wrestling, we've got about three more, two and a half more weeks to go before that event. So please check those out. It's going to be a really cool event. Those are shot really cool and uh, they're really in depth. So please take advantage of the YouTube page and check that out. So at this time, Miss Didi Jone, I'm going to turn it over to you for your shout outs and thank yous. Oh, shout out to Jade. Shout out to Mel because Mel always gets shout outs. Shout out to Tatiana Janine. Shout out to Greg, Sam. Shout out to you, Don. And shout out to everybody who used all of the hashtags this week, the ones on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and even sometimes on Wednesday. Um, I would ask that if you love us, and we know that you do, to go ahead and rate us and leave some beautiful reviews on our iTunes because we're awesome. 
and people should know about it. Thank you, Miss Didi Jeanne, for being a part of a lot of these 250 episodes of the WrestleCast. Give a big shout out to Sam and Greg and anybody who's been a guest ever on the WrestleCast. I know we've kind of slowed down on our guests this year. Um, 2018, we were definitely the People's Podcast uh, <laughs> with all the guests that we had. So we definitely enjoy having our fans on as guests. Like I said, thank you to everybody who supports us and mentions us whenever they uh you know reach out to talk about black wrestling podcasts and just podcasts that people listen to in general i'm always honored and flattered to be mentioned uh it's definitely humbling and we are glad that we are making a footprint in the uh iwc because you know we got to speak up for our black folks in wrestling because, you know, they'd be trying to drown out the voices and drown out the people that we like and not push them and not celebrate them. So we got to be the voices to do that. So glad that we can do that and allow other people to do that. We're always here for you to share your commentary with color follow our hashtags, live tweet with us, interact with us. Like Didi said, please, please, please rate us, review us. Also, check out our sponsors on CSPN.us. Also, check out the Patreon page. Check out the Dark Match over on Patreon.com forward slash CSPN Media. Just another heads up. I'm going to be pushing this that the AEW coverage will be on the Dark Match once AEW starts in October. So, the main show will not contain AEW coverage. All the AEW coverage will be over on the Dark Match. So, please subscribe and get uh, those podcasts. A lot of good information and content. Uh, those, those are usually the pre and post show conversations that take place before the cast is strong style and the WrestleCast. So, there will be some wrestling and just a lot of just, you know, banter and what's going on. So, something a little bit extra. If you enjoy what we do here at the WrestleCast, please check out the Dark Match over on patreon.com forward slash CSPN Media. So, for my SmackDown Matters correspondent, Miss Didi Jone, for our Rawcast broadcast journalist, Mr. Samuel Kalunga, I'm your host, Don DeLorente. This has been episode 250 of the WrestleCast. Please stay tuned for the parting promo. There is no question now that someone is out to get Roman Reigns. But we had nothing to do with the car accident, and we had nothing to do with the horrific backstage accident. Despite Buddy Murphy falsely accusing Rowan and by association falsely accusing me, we had nothing to do with it. Because here's the thing, Buddy Murphy is a liar. But, but I don't blame... I don't, I, I don't blame Buddy Murphy because if any of you, any single one of you, you would all lie. You would all cave if Roman Reigns had your face pressed against the wall. You would all lie and you would all cave. I do not blame Buddy Murphy. The problem is Buddy Murphy gave the wrong name. You see, you see, that's what's wrong with all of you. And that's what's wrong with society. Somebody tells a lie, it gets spread on social media, and then all of a sudden, it becomes the truth. It becomes the truth. Well, I hate to disappoint you. I hate to disappoint you. But Rowan and I had nothing to do with these incidents and tonight 
We are going to prove it.